Oh man, we missed this beautiful giggle that you just made right before we turned the sound on. Well, I was reading, I was reading MTG's comment muted that you're chanting some occult chant, and which is absolutely true. That's how we get the magic technology to work. <laughs> so uh, welcome to the State of Decay stream. Uh, I'm Jeffrey Carr. This is Brant Fitzgerald next to me, and uh, over on the other side of the couch, we've got Josiah Colborn, uh, who is here. He is a world builder on the team, and he's going to be talking to us about whatever he wants to talk about, but probably maps. Uh, we'll see. Yeah. Um, in the meantime, State of Decay 2, it, like, it's not even interesting to talk about the fact that it's released now because it's been like an entire day. And uh, yes. people who wanted the game have got the game and they're playing it. People have got opinions. Um, so I guess we might as well just jump right into it. Yeah, yeah. I'm sure <laughs> there's plenty of you that have had plenty of time to sink your teeth in and really explore the maps. There's like, there's, there's real uh, content that you've been able to enjoy. So I'll, I'll be excited to see what you have to say. Uh, so right here, we're actually playing in uh, Meager Valley, which uh, I think every, all, all the world builders have touched each of the maps at some point or another, right? Yep. So you've, you've had a, a chance to spend some time in Meager Valley. Yeah, yeah. Especially uh, that map in particular. It was the last of the three that we developed. So um, uh, as a result, there was some, some nice downtime where we wanted to switch maps off and get fresh eyes on them and trade them around to add a little spice. Uh, so there's, a, there's maybe a good... Uh, a nice fat chunk of it that uh, I could say I was responsible for. Um, yeah. yeah. Folks are asking if we're going to be streaming on Friday. Actually, the boss has been kind enough to give us a few days off after release. So after today, we're actually going to spend a few days um, at home reminding our families who we are. And uh, and then we'll be back uh, next week sometime. So. Oh, crap. I have a family. Oh. <laughs> so <laughs> so we're, oh, I, I, didn't mean no. to, I didn't mean to remind you, Brant. I'm sorry. Uh, so we're gonna be uh, we'll be back to stream again next Wednesday. So uh, we, we try to do this every Wednesday uh, when we can. So that's gonna be you know now that we're kind of past the the release time where we're just trying to stream as often as we possibly can. Uh, we'll we'll settle more into the the traditional weekly cadence. Uh, me and Brant coming here with a different guest every time and uh, talking to you folks about the game. So I, I just want to point out Adele's here. Oh hello, Dell. There's your firearm. You can't really read it, but it's, <laughs> it's got your brand on it. Well, that's awesome. Can you uh, look at look at it in the inventory? Does it say? Uh, I don't think it has text. Oh, it doesn't. It's just the Hunter's Model 29. Yeah, but the the side of the gun says uh, Adele 44. <laughs> <laughs> nice. So. Uh, so so these characters that I just got you. Um, so so last time uh, we were playing, Brant was going for a new base, uh, but he didn't have quite enough characters uh, to pull it off. And so during the break, uh, I, I used the radio to, uh, to track down a couple of new uh, a new survivors and recruited them. So you've got a computer expert, and you've got the one you've got right here is I think is a pretty good fighter too. So shall we? We could go to um, Camp Kalenqua. Camp Camp Kalinqua, there's a... I love some of the names in here, by the way. So There's uh, the Country Church. I named a lot of stuff in this game, but I did not name um, the regions and the locations and stuff like that. So Kalenqua was not mine. Squilonis is a common one that mm -hmm. people like latch onto. It was not mine. Uh, so that, a lot of those came from James and, the other, uh, and you and the other uh, uh, world builders. Yeah, I think uh, on Meager Valley specifically, the vast majority of the names came from James. Um, but and then I named the neighbor most of the neighborhoods. Oh, that's right. Nice. That came from yeah, yeah. So Ditchwater is my is my <laughs> crowning achievement. That is a, that is a good neighborhood. <laughs> but being that the game is set in sort of a pseudo Pacific Northwest, there's a lot of things up here that are named after Native American tribes and other sort of native words that are kind of ingrained in the culture up here, at least in sort of the background way, because you know we've got all sorts of fun native named towns up here. Like Seattle itself. Oh yeah, that's right. Is, uh, originates from Native Americans. So, uh, Squim is spelled S-E-Q-U-I-M. Which is, Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it's like Squilones. You can kind of see some of the heritage of some of those names. So we should tell, so a few of the things we're going to be doing on this stream. Uh, one thing, we're going to be giving a couple of things away. Uh, so definitely stick around uh, if you want to get a lovely water bottle, for instance, or maybe a Skull Eagle t-shirt. You can tell this is a Sort of a Skull Eagle T-shirt. We'll, we'll we'll make you make sure you can see it a little better in a second. Um, but we oh. got we got that going on, and we're also going to try to answer some frequently asked questions. Uh, we went through a lot of those things uh, when we were uh, when we were streaming yesterday, the big three-hour stream on release day. But uh, where, we, where we destroyed our uh, our capture card. Uh, yeah, so our capture card died partway through, and we also um, uh, for some reason our capture software switched to the wrong mic. 
uh, without me realizing it. And so I was just shouting and redlining into a uh, into a webcam instead of our proper shotgun mic setup that we've got here on there the side. There is this base too. Oh, that pretty... is a great base. We've got some people who are uh, calling out their favorite bases. Uh, I know, uh, I think it was Alfred Ben who said that he thought the container fort was his favorite base, but this map was actually his favorite map. Uh, and so he can't he can't have both things. You got to make a trade off. Yeah. The container fort is in uh, Cascade Hills. For me, the strip mall base in uh, in Drucker County is my favorite base. That is a good one. Yeah, I, I've actually gotten really into the warehouse uh, in in, uh, in Drucker County. Get That's where I've been settled for a while. Yeah, it's a good base. It's, it's got that machine shop where I can just build anything that explodes that I want to, uh -uh. Uh, which is, which is pretty amazing. Uh, Craft dude asked. Um, that which uh, which of the three maps is closest to Trumbull Valley from the first game? Interesting. Yeah, and I've 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 been thinking about it. I my gut says Cascade Hills, maybe just because of some of the sort of uh, high line of sight blockers that mm -hmm. mimic driving around the roads, and also maybe the climate is closer there. Definitely not Drucker because Drucker's so dry by comparison. But the the um, farmland in Meager is so it's so lush. Yeah, like, yeah, and it's so it's lush and flat, which is kind of not the way that. Yeah, I, I think yeah. I agree with you. Cascade Hills is probably, uh, so, and it's got that nice, yeah. a solid mix of like it's got farmland, but it's also got like industrial type areas, and it's got little downtowns, uh, which is yeah. the same kind of mix that, that Trumbull Valley had. Yeah. So I, mean, I guess every everything's got a little bit of a mix, but you can definitely see that you know the the agricultural side is very dominant in Eager. And, right. Uh, yeah. Yeah, it's everywhere. So uh, let's Come see. On, so we got we got a lot of folks who've been saying nice things about the game, which we really appreciate. You know, after spending th three plus years on this game, uh, you know, <laughs> getting your positive feedback definitely makes it feel like it's worth it. So so thank you very much. There's the Red Monkey branded. Uh, you can see that now. Red Monkey Tactical. Another shout out. Nice Easter eggs aplenty. Uh, so KNT Legend uh, on Mixer says the game's super fun so far, but a big patch would be great. Uh, we definitely we have a patch that's in the works. Uh, we can't uh, it, we're not always sure exactly when they're going to land, so we can't give you any dates on it. But we do there is a uh, one in the works, and even after that one comes out, we're going to keep working on it. You know we're yeah. going to we're going to keep paying attention to what you guys report and what you say. You know is working and what's not working, and we want this game to run as smoothly and as well as possible. So Swish. we're we're not going to stop working on it. We've all got still got open bug queues, uh, and we're just going to keep working on any problems that get reported to us uh, right. until this sucker uh, shines. Yeah, and I, just to give a little background on why you know we aren't patching every day is there's, there's a smart publishing process <laughs> to make sure that we get some testers to spend some good time with the game and pass some certification. So, so certain things might be fixed on our side for a while, but we have to make 100% sure that it's going to be that we, if we upload the patch, it doesn't like destroy your save games, which yeah. I don't, I'm sure you guys would hate. Yeah, I mean, exactly. I would hate it, there, so. It, it's so easy when you're fixing a bug to make a worse bug at the yeah. same time, and so we want to make sure we're not doing that. So it takes some time to get the fixes out there. Let's take yeah. a second to uh, I believe Snowy Death Kitten is in um, Twitch chat. Oh, look at that. That is a Snowy Death Kitten. That is Snowy Death Kitten. <laughs> Those of you who have been with us for a while um, recognize the t-shirt, maybe, that I wore that they sent me. I still have that. Uh, it's sitting at my desk as a uh, prize of honor. Um, and then, you know, there's... We just like to show the Easter eggs a little bit. Uh, Penology says that uh, he I loves can't. the area around Camp Kalinqua. Uh, the, the, the giant trees and the wind farms remind him of the West Coast rainforests. Uh, which, uh, yeah... Man, so if you if you grew up and lived here for a big chunk of your life, you've probably been camping there, and I have, and those are beautiful places to camp in those Northwest Rainforests. So cool. Uh, English Bull is wondering where his weapon went. Does he have one? Bull. <laughs> okay, so Bull, you have um, you have a very <laughs> a very special Easter egg that I will actually have to send you a screenshot of because it's pretty rare. Uh, you'll find your. Um, You'll find your tag art around the world, uh, but there's there's one um, that was especially uh, given to you that um, may not be very visible. So I'll send you a screenshot of it. Uh, so let's get into some of the frequently asked questions. We want to make sure we get the answers out to. Uh, so uh, one of them was, uh, what do you earn? Uh, for playing in a friend's game. If you want to play multiplayer and you're going to leave your community, take one of your characters and go into a friend's community. There's a lot of people that worry that you know that, that if you're playing in a friend's game, you're just wasting your time. You know that you're not uh, that you're not getting any progress. So yeah, not just your time, but also 
you're risking your guy's life. You're spending his <laughs> ammo. Like, what am right? I doing it for, right? Yeah. Um, I will I will answer with my experience so far. I played probably 30 hours or more of multiplayer um, as a as a visitor, and I am extremely happy with the amount of uh, influence I gain by doing that. Um, now I'm able to move to just about any. There's no influence cost that I can't bear right now because I've been playing in other people's games. Yeah. Um, so you get a massive amount of influence from playing in other people's games. Plus you get gear. I mean, it gives yeah. you like drops of gear for for spending um, large amounts of time or any amount of time actually. Even in addition to the gear you just find while you're scavenging yes, in your friend's even map. Even in addition to the gear you find, um, and uh, so it's. It makes it totally worth it to go spend time in other people's games. And then um, if your friends are actually good friends, then they'll come and spend time helping you. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, and then on top of that, uh, you also, your character gains experience. Um, and so they can, they can get better at their skills while they're in the other game. Yep. The only thing you don't make any progress on are the things that actually live in your map. Because each map, uh, the, all the contents of the map, the people that are there, the loot that's there, uh, the stories that are being told there, the, the people in your community, that stuff is all procedurally generated differently for every single player. And so when you're playing in your friend's game, they've got completely different stuff out in the map than you have. And so all the stories that you play through, all the missions you play through, they're just completely different from yours. And so the progress you make in your friend's game is just kind of irrelevant <laughs> to your game. Uh, and so when you come back, you know, your story won't have progressed any further, but that's because you're just telling a completely different story. Yeah, but your character is badass when they come back. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, I just, I just, uh, you know, it's like they, they went to visit. They're the French Foreign Legion, really. They showed up with... <laughs> Uh, you know, no skills, and then all of a sudden they they come back and they're um, they're uh, superstars. So um, so all forty one fourteen. Okay, I'll just call you all forty one, and just pretend that there's a mirror in the middle of your uh, of your uh, your screen name. Um, all forty one. Uh, yeah, there is a com uh, a commercially available soundtrack for State of Decay two. I think that it's out. I think you can get yep. it on iTunes. Yep. Um, so so look that up because yeah the I agree the music here is great uh, we got a mix of um, of Dreisk uh, our local uh, which is the the sort of the name of our of our local audio guy audio director and then um, why can't I think of the name of our composer the other soundtrack you mean composer. Jesper Kid Jesper Kid yes thank you and and, and Jesper Kid so between yeah. the two of them there's a lot of great tracks uh, you can get on there uh, so definitely look it up um, oh sorry go ahead oh I just didn't say it's a beautiful soundtrack and if you uh, and if you uh, do any pen and paper role playing or anything, you need like cool background music for your zombie apocalypse. Oh, it's perfect. Or maybe even your western game. Like this, the music is is great for that. And, or just you like to work with cool music on. I love the soundtrack. It's great. Uh, so we've got a question from B Mobile on Twitch who says, "What is the maximum community size in the game?" I think I'm capped at ten, but I heard another say they have twelve. Uh, so the 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 cap is actually kind of complicated because um, officially the cap is nine. Uh, so once you get nine or more people, uh, we stop spawning new recruit missions. The problem is because we already could have responded, uh, 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 spawned a recruit mission, even a, a pretty big recruit mission, by the time uh, you reach the cap, uh, it's possible for you to then go beyond the cap by as many as three. So, so really, you could get up to 12 people in your community if you're really super, super lucky and you happen to grab the right combination of missions at the right time. Uh, but officially the cap is nine. And so if once you get to nine, you know, you're not going to see any new recruit missions become available to you until your population drops again. Um, and the reason for that is just we, we really want, we don't want characters to feel like just numbers in this game. We don't want it to feel like, oh, I've got four, you know, 40 people and I don't know any of their names or what they're good at. Like we want each, yeah. each character in the game to feel like they're important to you. Like you're, you know, there's a count, there's a, a knowable number of people in your community. You guys see this pro move I'm doing? Oh, that's pretty great. So he's attracting all of the zombies in the yeah. base why, to one place to kill them at once. Why, why go? Why make a lot of trips when you can just one-stop shop? Especially in Camp Kalenko, which is made up of so many separate buildings. Like it would, it would take forever to to track down all those zombies. That's right. Especially when you go, hey zombies, check this out. <laughs> nice. And <laughs> they're running around in it. Ah, oh, fire bad. Granted, that may have that may have spawned some others. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love our finishers. Okay, so um, so actually, that question about the community size is actually the next um, frequently asked question I was going to hit anyway. So very well timed. Um, another question is, how do I get my pre-order bonuses? 
uh, because you know there's a lot of folks who who ordered the ultimate edition or ordered you know a, a, the game from a particular retailer uh, that offered pre-order bonuses, but then they weren't quite sure where to get them. So if you ordered a disc copy of the game, you actually probably have a code somewhere in your packaging that you need to 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 redeem in the in the store in order to get your actual bonuses. So first, make sure you've done that if if that was a, a necessary step for you. Um, and then make sure that you know if there's any it, look, look um, on the uh, on the store you know at, at, at your game and make sure that if there's any add-ons that need to be downloaded you've downloaded them all. Uh, and so once you've downloaded your add-ons, then you can open up the radio menu that is on uh, the O key or uh, the uh, up uh, the up uh, key on the D-pad, uh, the up button on the D-pad. Um, go to your radio menu and you should see an option on the radio menu that includes your pre-order bonuses. So you just you call those up, they'll arrive as a supply drop or, or a vehicle drop, um, and then you can play with them. And then you, know, you, you get one drop initially, and then in the future you can also, if you start a new community or if you just wait until the cooldown is over, you can actually get, get them, some of them multiple times. But you pay influence for them, is that right? Uh, yeah, I think you pay influence for them. And so, so we, we didn't want them to be just like a sudden, just easy win button. And so they do have to fit into the economy of the game. Yeah. Uh, I believe that the first one is free, though. I think the first time you grab it, uh, it's, it's, it's free so that, you know, you so can enjoy it I just quick. took over this base. So this, okay, so we live at Camp Kalinqua now? Yep. That is awesome. Um, I will need to... Let's see. I think we have enough beds already, uh, which is I'm not good. Quite sure what to make of that. I've got two actions running. We got water, which is awesome. <laughs> oh yeah, that makes a big difference because uh, I was looking at the farm we had and I wanted to upgrade it, except we needed water in order to upgrade. So this is a good place to go if you want uh, to have some easy farming. Um, we had a question uh, from. So Great, I lost it. Oh yeah, uh, Juv88 asks, will there be an expansion like Breakdown? Uh, we haven't revealed uh, the details about any of our future expansion plans, uh, but one thing I will tell you is that, is that a lot of the, um, the experience, a lot of the aspects of Breakdown that were people's favorites, we actually incorporated into the base game in this game. So you can play the game infinitely, the story is procedurally generated, you can move from map to map to keep refreshing uh, your available resources, and all, that's, all that stuff from Breakdown is just incorporated into the game now, so you don't need to wait for an expansion for that. Uh, the difficulty levels of Breakdown, the, the specific reward structure of Breakdown, isn't in the game, uh, and so we'll have to we'll have to see if any if, if people are interested enough in that stuff for it to be uh, worth a, a future DLC pack. Uh, but we haven't really announced any details about DLC, so we can't we can't give you you know specific answers about that. So we ha I'm I'm checking out the characters uh, to see what skills are available and what we might need. Oh yeah. Um, so we've got one, two, three. We've got two people who have available skill slots. Okay. And. Uh, Oh, we got this guy. He's he's ready with a uh, uh, with a specialization. Oh, so we do we want to be so into uh, one of the questions we're getting a lot. What does the yellow mean? Okay, so um, the the square means that's that's a really common specialization. Uh, with the, the 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 endurance has got a square and it's got the gray text. It means it's a really common one. Most characters can have that one. And so there's nothing super special about it. Occasionally, if a character has a rare trait, they might lose that access to that one, but almost everyone has it. Uh, and so it's not that special. Swordplay, for, though, it's got the, the yellow diamond and the yellow text. That's a rarer one. Maybe only about a quarter of characters are going to have access to that one, a quarter to a third of them. Um, and so, uh, so when you see that, we just wanted you to have an understanding of, you know, which things are rare and which things are common so that, so that you know, like, oh... You know, maybe I want to grab swordplay with this guy because not everybody else is going to have that. Whereas, you know, if you choose... Swordplay is so much fun. I know. <laughs> Seriously, like, all, your animations change when you're holding the bladed weapon. Uh, you're cutting arms and legs off like crazy. Um, yeah, so it's great. But yeah, so, that, but, so that's what that means. Uh, there's a request for you to data dump the hero traits. Oh, man, all 82 of them? Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> Uh, I don't think I don't think we can. Uh, there's there's a there's a fair number of different hero bonuses, and all of them, uh, which hero bonus your character has, is dependent on their traits. Um, every, uh, most traits have one or have have a hero bonus associated with them, um, and so if your character has three traits, there's like maybe up to three potential hero bonuses that character might have. And then we randomly choose which one it's going to be. And so you can usually tell, if you look at their hero bonus, you can usually look at their traits and sort of figure out why that character has that hero bonus. Um, there's a few that, that like, like, like good example, for instance, uh, is, is a hero bonus that is it's generic enough that we, can ki we kind of apply it across the board to a lot of different characters. 
Um, so a few of them are generic like that. Most of them are, are pretty specific and tied into the traits. I need to find an electricity book so I can build the solar array. Hmm. The, uh, it's Ooh, a trade depot. <laughs> Blam. Done. Well, not done. Started. Uh, Killer Zone uh, says, I found a zombie with a traffic cone on his head. Is that a new freak? <laughs> <laughs> that, that is uh, super rare. Super rare. Yeah, super rare Easter egg, basically. I, yeah. I think I think that thing does actually count as a helmet, right? Like, it's basically, he's like a helmeted zombie. Yeah, it only shows up on armored zombies, I'm pretty sure, doesn't it? Okay, yeah, yeah that makes, in place of their helmet. In place yeah. of their helmet. Yeah. And a, as usual, our homage to um, the, the, the great zombie-related games that have come before us. So, uh, Captain Assassin asks, uh, how does Brant feel about removing uh, 40 Cal? from uh, State of Decay 2. No, so we didn't remove it, we just never added it. <laughs> nice. But, yeah. Well, in, in comparison to the first game, yeah. we got rid of a couple um, calibers. Uh, one, because I always had a little bit of a problem um, putting in firearms that had calibers that, that we didn't represent anyways, like 5.7 and things like that. Um, but also because there was really no gameplay need to have, like... Three more calibers, um, yeah. and so many games go for just much sim uh, simplified caliber system. Where it's like we have pistol, pistol ammo and rifle, rifle ammo yeah. and SMG ammo, just for the sake of keeping it simple, so players don't have to like navigate a maze of different ammo types. And we decided to go with uh, legit ammo types just because it, it made the, it lent the game a sense of realism, yeah. uh, which which is really good. And it made people people who were really into guns, like you and Dan Mode, could, could feel like they were they were biting off something that was a little bit more well, and, chewy, you know? I mean, and, you know, the, the first game we were able to... Oh, come on. I didn't bring her anything. Uh -oh. <laughs> she, oh, she's one of the new characters. Isn't but she? I have a shotgun. You have an amazing shotgun. Why did I not use that before? Because now you're attracting more zombies. That's right. <laughs> um, the 40 cal, 10 millimeter, all stuff like that is not as um, is not location. as versatile. Um, so I I was fine with removing. Um, ooh, do we want a med outpost right here? How many outpost slots do we have? We got one left. Um, that one's gonna have to be power. So yeah. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. One of the things I really like about the, the ammo types that we have is that um, if you have a game that's just pistol ammo, ammo or rifle ammo, the I feel like there's some nuance Dude. lost because we have 22 pistols and we also have 22 rifles yeah. and yeah. 22 rifles that can be scoped and we have 22 revolvers, if I'm not mistaken, as well. Uh, yeah, I think so. Yep. Yeah, so there's like all of those types of weapons, rifle, pistol, revolver, revolver excuse me, revolver, revolver. <laughs> yeah, and uh, even assault weapons. I think we have an automatic uh, 22 like a uh, submachine gun, right? Yeah, so, oh, yeah. yeah. They're, they're, they're yeah. very versatile. Yeah, so... So I, I just wanted to point out, this was one of my crowning achievements in storytelling, was uh, this little research center, and there's a vial spilled on the ground. <laughs> dun, dun, dun. Dun, dun, dun. But yeah, the point you were making is great, though, because you can have a character who's really good with rifles, but being good with rifles isn't mm -hmm. just one thing. A twenty two rifle is going to have a very different effect on a zombie than a fifty cal. And, right. and, and and trying to trying to lump all rifles into one giant category just wouldn't yeah. make any sense, right? And so ha I like yeah, I like the fact that we have these sort of these two axes that a, that a ranged weapon can vary on. It's yeah. caliber, actually, literally, the caliber does determine a lot of stuff about the weapon, like how how hard it hits a zombie, how mm -hmm. likely it is to knock a limb off. All that is determined by the caliber, not by specifically by this by the type of weapon. Right. Um, and, uh, and and then the type of weapon can can influence it too. And you know, there's there's just it, it's a more complicated system, but it means each individual weapon feels like it's kind of unique, like mm -hmm. it's got a, a lot of room to be different from other weapons. This is my favorite power, right here. Like your favorite power uh, outpost? Yes. Is it, oh, and this is this the oh. windmill? Oh, we can't quite. Oh, you did man. not set me up for success, Jeffrey. <laughs> I only had twenty minutes. <laughs> you, you need to play more multiplayer as a guest. Uh, Nomis, uh, yeah, we, we have talked about uh, the, the, the need for the ability to depose leaders in the game. It's, uh, it's, it's a favorite uh, suggested feature over here, too. We can't make any promises about when or how we, uh, when or whether we might actually implement such a feature, but I agree with you it's that would be really valuable. Definitely on our radar yeah. as, as something we need to seriously, like, Discuss. Yeah, we're all, we're always going to be cagey about whether or not we're actually doing a particular thing, but but I definitely want to acknowledge that that is a good idea that that, that you know we, we, we'd love to be able to to provide. 
We do need meds. What else do we want? Do we want a garden? Or do we want um, a lounge for people to be happy? This is your base. Uh, no, no, you can do whatever you want. You're, you're the player right now. What's your leader type? Let's find out. Uh, yeah, wasn't he a, was he a builder? He, uh, trader. Trader, okay, okay, cool. So does that mean that we want to have a lot of influence? Like, we want to have, uh, get, hmm, I'm trying to think what it is that we want. We've got so much space to grow. It's so cool. Well, let's let's build a farm for now, so I have to, I have less to worry about as food. Of course, there's a Our threat level's amazing a now. A giant threat. <laughs> Um, so Rogue36 Black says, did you make a real conscious effort to balance resource depletion versus resource recovery? Uh, uh, yes, we did, because he's talking about the fact that it, that, uh, it was too easy uh, for, for them in the first game uh, to reach the point where they had so much that, that they weren't really anxious about losing resources anymore. Oh God, um, that's so actually one of the reasons why you know, we've, we've had some people uh, 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 complain a little bit about how characters keep sort of like stumbling over and spilling things back at the base. They'll report like, oh, whoops, I, you know, accidentally blew up some of our fuel. Uh -oh, or butterfingers. Yeah. <laughs> um, and I realize that can be annoying, but that, but that feature as Whoa, well as- Whoa, no! Whoa! Get out, get out, get out, get out! <laughs> no! Why did I power slide into that? <laughs> you just took your different so, so that that particular feature, as well as a bunch of others, were a part of, of a, yes, a very conscious effort that went into trying to balance. Oh, Torn, try, <laughs> Trying to balance the game so that uh, so that no matter what, that, there, that it was very hard to get to a position where you were completely safe. That there there aren't enough facility slots or outpost slots to just make yourself a hundred percent self sufficient uh, with with you know your resource needs, uh, or at least if you find a way to do it, you have you have massively uh, you've done a very good job of, of working your way through our systems, um, and and similarly you know there's lots of different ways that resources can get absorbed. Like the higher level of uh, facilities all have maintenance costs and different resources to try to keep uh, you needing to go and scavenge and produce things in order to stay on top of them. So we have definitely tried uh, to do that. So so we'll, we'll be getting feedback from people about you know how successful we were and we're gonna keep adjusting, but. Uh... Yeah, and the way I feel about it, I played through the game a few times and the way I feel about the way the balance works out now is that your maximums in terms of how many resources you can hold in your base and your storage uh, versus how much you spend at any given time when you want to make something. Uh, you never have so much that you feel like you could just spend forever and never run out. It's always like, okay, I could make three or four things, but then I'd be hurting for resources again. And so I think, uh, you know, and if you're if, if you're getting overloaded on a resource, you can make an easy decision to say, you know what, I'm going to slip myself back below my maximum and, and build something useful and then ultimately go and consume that. Um, whatever you decided to build to get rid of some resources. I think it's, I think the balance works out. Yeah, Shrubman64 points out, uh, or, or asks, but basically points out that the uh, the staging area, for instance, it takes an entire large slot, but part of what it does is reduce the maintenance cost of your base. Uh, so, so that things like, like you know, all the material costs of all the advanced facilities uh, can are, are, are reduced when you have the staging area. So there's lots of different, tra but to do that, you have to spend an entire large slot, which is one of the more valuable resources in the game. Uh, so it's it, there's definitely a lot of trade-offs involved. We want everything to feel like a trade-off. <laughs> I just saw the achievement. For building the uh, the trade the trade uh, place. Oh, what, what was that? I forgot what it was Who called. Who run Barter Town? Oh, right, yes. I love it. <laughs> That's awesome. That was a lot of fun. Yeah, coming up with man, coming up with achievement list is lit. Like ever since the that Xbox, was you, right? Yeah, yeah, ever, ever since. Oh. Ever since, whoa, that was beautiful. Real world physics. <laughs> ever since uh, the the Xbox 360 came out. Every game that I've built for the Xbox for the Xbox platform, my favorite thing has been coming up with the achievement lists. Uh, so yeah, so that's that's a lot of fun. Um, so uh, we got a couple people um, asking about ETA on bug fixes for certain things like uh, the flashlight strobing, the um, uh, car doors in multiplayer. I'm not sure exactly which fixes are in the very next patch, but definitely the the bugs that you're listing are ones that are on our radar that we that we do have people working on fixing. Right now. So, um, I you know just wanted to reassure you we, we we're aware of the same ones and, and 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 we're definitely working on that. I wish we could say a specific time and day for specific fixes. But we, we also we don't want to be the the people who promise something and don't deliver. <laughs> yeah, so, exactly. Um, yeah, we're we're how well aware of those. Though. Uh, Scarface nine eighty nine wondered how many shotguns there are in the game. <laughs> Lots. <laughs> there's um, there's quite a few. Actually, shotguns are very well represented. We have. Um, Oh gosh, 
probably five or six different frames. And then on top of each one of those frames is however many variations Brian decided to make. Yeah, so, so we, we could have different, uh, you know, like if it's if it's a magazine-loaded you know, shotgun, uh, it could have different sizes of magazines. It could have, diff you know, some of them could come with different chokes on them. Yeah. And uh, and you and any shotgun, you can change the choke as well. Oh, speaking, speaking of, of which, look at that. Look at I that. Just, nice. I just added a choke to my shotgun, so. Nice. I should, I'm just gleefully searching like nothing's going on <laughs> and there happens to be like a, a giant what? play cart right there okay, I'm gonna, your health is pretty low i don't know I'm if you want to do this right base. now I'm yeah gonna... come back with some explosives um take so that zambi we should go through some of these frequently asked questions uh some more so um and then i'll do a couple of those and then we'll actually do a uh, a giveaway so uh so be ready for that megan and wonder watching in the chat um so how do you repair broken weapons is, is a question we get a lot. And we need to tutorialize this better. I will go back and do that right now. That is a great plan. Okay, you go do that. I'll answer the next question, and we'll actually demonstrate that for you. Um, another frequently asked question. Um, let's see here. How do you pause the game? Uh, actually, let's do that one after the... We'll do that one in a second, too, because that's something you can demonstrate, too, when you're not in the middle of driving. Um, let's see here. Oh, uh, one question we get a lot is, uh, you know, when a lot of times when you've got a character that you're playing who's got a, a specific mission that that, ca that character cares about, um, when you switch away from that character, we warn you, oh no, this mission's going to go away if you switch away from this character. Um, and people are wondering, how worried should I be about that? Am I missing content forever if I, if I switch away from that character? Um, so we erred on the side of warning you when things were going to happen, but we probably, like... O like overstated that warning a little bit because um, in most cases a lot of those missions are totally going to come back. If like if if you decide to skip away from the mission right now, you'll ha you'll probably have another opportunity. There are rare cases where a particular mission requires certain things uh, that are hard to get, and so it could be that that one it could be a long delay before that mission comes back again. But most of the time you're not really missing that much. So please feel free to switch away between characters and you'll have to, you'll still have plenty of mission content coming to you. So you're going to you're going to uh, show so so the first thing you got to do when you want to repair weapons and let me actually switch so that we can see the full screen here. Um, the first thing you want to do when you need to repair a weapon is build yourself a workshop because that's a prerequisite to be able to do this. But you don't Ooh. but you don't oh and do you not have a workshop right now? <clears throat> let's uh, let's uh, build that real quick. Oh no, I got one. You got one? Okay, cool. Right. So okay, so you got a workshop, and then um, <laughs> but you don't actually use the workshop to um, uh, to repair the weapon, and that that's sort of a key thing is that uh, be, even though the workshop is necessary, uh, the workshop is not actually where you do it. Um, where do you do it, Brant? So I walk over to my supply locker. And I you go to my inventory. Uh, and you got to actually move it into the into the storage. So I you drop push it a into storage. storage. Yeah. I go over and select it. And down, you see at the bottom, the bottom of the bottom, screen there. You'll see repair. I hit the coordinated button and choose repair if I have enough parts. Yeah, actually, Alfred Ben was actually uh, uh, talking about how he feels like the cost of repairing weapons can be a little bit high. But we kind of we kind of want we don't want maintaining a million weapons to necessarily be really easy, right? right it's, it, it's an effort. I do have an option here, also on the bottom, to salvage. Yeah, so if, you, if you're running low on parts, there's a lot of ways to get parts, including salvaging weapons like that hatchet that we don't need. Um, salvaging more, com more expensive, more complex weapons will give you more parts. Uh, also, salvaging weapons that are in better condition will give you more parts. Mm -hmm. And if you're running low on parts, you can also um, turn materials into parts at your storage locker. Um, and there's even, uh, like, the forge and other, um, uh, other facilities can even unlock better ways to, to get parts. And the CNC mill. Yeah, yeah, that's another one. Facility mod, yep. So so that's how you repair weapons. And then do you want to show pausing real quick, too, actually, while we're at it? We'll switch back to here. Um, so right now, we actually can pause our game because we are playing in offline mode. That's right here. Multiplayer is one of our settings. And if you select multiplayer, you can go into friends-only mode or, uh, uh, or you know, one of the other open modes. So now it says game is not paused Yeah, because so I'm... I'm essentially in multiplayer mode right now. Yeah, so a pl if, I, if I had any friends, uh, someone could join our game right now. Which, and, sadly, you don't. Yeah, exactly. So I'm going to go All back. of my friends are in this room. <laughs> I'm uh, going to go back to settings, multiplayer. I'm going to switch it to offline. And now... The game my, is paused. The game is paused. So that's how the, So if anybody's been wondering about how to pause this game, or assuming you could not pause the game because you happened to start at, in, in multiplayer mode, uh, that's definitely an option. Because you know, for me, 
being able to pause the game is an absolute necessity. I've got four kids, any of whom might want to crawl on my face at any particular time, and I need to be able to pause a game. Oh, it looks like you've got a mission that somebody wants to uh, borrow Some, a gun from somebody you. Somebody wants guns. And so now, now all of your guns have exclamation points on them. Right. Hey, Maybe. this might be a gun someone wants. I would definitely give them the damage. The damage. <laughs> I'd do the same thing. <laughs> oh yeah, why not? Uh, Tormentrix uh, has a great name and uh, asks, wh why did we not include the ability to call people to loot locations for you? Um, so in the original game, for those who don't know, um, uh, when it first shipped, there were no vehicle inventories. You really could only bring home one rucksack at a time. Um, and in, in order to solve that problem, uh, we included a feature in the game where, uh, I say we as though I were on the team at the time, which I was not, uh, but we included a feature that allowed you to call some, uh, somebody from your base to come and loot additional rucksacks for you uh, so you could help you know, clean out a house more effectively. Um, and, but what that meant was that character had to physically leave your base, walk all the way to where you were, get the rucksack, and walk all the way back with a lot of potential trouble happen happening along the way. Um, and so when a State of Decay Lifeline came out, uh, we actually added a feature that let you load rucksacks into the trunks of vehicles. And that meant that one person could go out and get way more rucksacks than they could before. Um, and so when we, were, when we were building the new game, we included that vehicle you know, inventory feature, uh, which meant that we actually didn't need to, 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 <laughs> to put in the other solution to the problem, which was inviting one person to walk all the way across the map to get one rucksack and then come all the way back. It felt like a very inefficient way to do it and, and, and one that was fraught with opportunities for you know, characters to get in trouble, to get lost, to get hurt. Um, and so, so we basically decided to, to not include the dangerous, inefficient method um, and instead only include the very efficient, much safer, uh, more user-friendly method of collecting uh, rucksacks. Uh, but one, one feature that actually, this is another one of our frequently asked questions, one feature that's really important uh, when, you're, when you're trying to transport large numbers of rucksacks in a vehicle is knowing that when a vehicle is parked in front of your base, you don't actually need to load individual rucksacks and items out of the trunk, run That's them right. inside, deposit them, come back outside, load up a rucksack, run it inside. We know a lot of players have been doing that, and uh, we really want people to know there's a button you can press. When you, when you, oh, when you open uh, the trunk of a vehicle when it's in one of your designated parking spots at your base, you've got a new button icon at the bottom of the screen that tells you you can actually transfer items directly into your supply locker uh, or, or your storage uh, from the back of that car. Um, and so it's the right trigger uh, by default if you're using a controller, um, and it's I believe it's the T button, uh, the T key if you're playing with a keyboard. Uh, so definitely be aware of that because that that will save you so much time uh, if if you primarily um, unload stuff into your base via via vehicle trunk. Yeah, and while we're on the subject of unloading stuff, one one thing I've noticed people have discovered is that if you go to your stash if you're on foot. You can just deposit your whole backpack into the stash. Oh, yeah. And everything from your backpack will go in there. So you don't have to oh. go one by one if you don't want to. I hadn't even thinking about that. That's awesome. That is yeah. good. That's going to end. And, and also, bear in mind that when, um, when you're out in the field, if you've got an outpost nearby, that supply locker, that outpost, is your supply locker from your base. And so uh, one thing that I like to do is I'll take, I'll take a car with a, big, with a big trunk out scavenging in a neighborhood, and I'll scavenge every house in that neighborhood, and I will load the, the, um, the rucksacks into the trunk of the vehicle because those can't be teleported home from far away. But all the items that I collect, I'll just make an outpost nearby. Mm -hmm. And all the items I collect, I'll just run to the supply locker, dump them all out, and then keep going. And so I don't actually need to go home until I've run out of space for rucksacks. Uh, which, which can be a lot more efficient. You vacuum up way more supplies that way. I guarantee there's going to be a siege any moment here. Look at my threat level. Oh, that's insane. It's <laughs> pretty big. Uh, Linda035, a uh, bunch of other numbers, uh, asks, uh, what map are you on right now? So as you can see on the screen that he oh. just left, uh, we're on Meager Valley, uh, which is described as the valley when you're going through the tutorial. Um, and so, yeah, this is the one. It's, it's, it's a lot of lush farmland, uh, lots of wide open spaces. Uh, lots of farms, barns. Farmhouses, things like that. Yeah, and lots of opportunities to just drive straight across the big expanses of land. That's right. Uh, wind farms, things like that. Uh, folks are asking, what is the best sword? Uh, Penology thinks it's the it's the grass cutter sword. Uh, do you have a favorite sword, either of you? I like the Bowie machete. Not exactly a sword. No, but, uh, I, say, I say all bladed weapons. Yeah. All bladed weapons are on the table. So so let's give a little background. It's yeah. also named the Colborn C6. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, yeah. I, I had forgotten that. Right? <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, there's every single one of our weapons, or not every single one, but almost all of them. This one included has a brand name that is typically associated with uh, one of our OG super fans or somebody who works here. 
yeah, yeah. It was a lot of those kinds of Easter eggs in the game, which was a lot of fun. A lot of the names of characters came from friends and family members of, of, of team members. In fact, if you get, if you get a weird uh, nickname that uh, you don't know where it comes from, you look at the character's name, you look at their traits, and you can't figure out where that nickname came from, chances are it's a family member of a developer or, uh, or, or maybe one of our, one of our you know, super fans from the forums or the Discord channel or something like that. Uh, we tried to include a lot of that stuff in the game for, for people to enjoy. I'm going to find resources. I'm going to locate to Madison. And see if they know and, where uh, we should look for goodies. Let's see what comes back because I'm seriously hurting for meds. Uh, more of our, oh, we never did. Uh, we need to do our uh, giveaway. So we're actually a little bit behind on that. We wanted to do it at the half hour mark. We're a little ten minutes late, but let's do it real quick. So um, while uh, while Brand is doing some mysterious thing you can't see. Uh, let's ask a question. So I'm, I'm assuming that uh, Wonder and Megan are ready for this. Uh, so let's. Uh, so what we are doing? So we're going to ask a trivia question. And if you want this bottle, try to post the right answer to the trivia question as fast as you can. Uh, the t first ten or so people who um, who give the right answer, uh, we're going to do a random selection amongst those people, and somebody is going to get a bottle. Uh, it, it, we're going to do one bottle giveaway in Mixer and another one on Twitch. Uh, so it's actually going to be two giveaways at once. So everybody uh, on both of our streaming platforms, get ready. Here is the question. Name the four specializations of the wits skill. So when you get seven stars in wits, uh, you are able to, uh, uh, to select one of four specializations. Now, each given character might only have two or three options. So you have to have played the game a bunch and seen a bunch of characters to know all four. Uh, so... Good luck. It might be maybe I'm not actually sure if we're late enough in the development uh, in the playing of this game that everyone will know the answer to this. So let's see. If there is only one person who gets the right answer, uh, then they will definitely get the bottle. Uh, I, did, I did some thinking and I and I realized I did know them all. Yeah, uh, I'm very I, satisfied I, with myself. <laughs> I had to stop for a second, and uh, when, when I was writing the answer to this, I had to, I had to stop and wait for a minute and, and try to figure out uh, what it was. Oh, Gooniverse, you are very close, but not quite. Uh, we got some folks giving answers to the cardio. Uh, so, yeah, so it's not powerhouse. That's cardio. It's not endurance. Uh, that's fighting. And uh, and I will... It, it, it's like, it looks like Mixer's actually having some trouble coming up with the answer. So if people don't get this one, I will try a different question. Uh, <laughs> but let's see here. I think Gooniverse might be the... Cl oh, wait, no. Um, oh, hey, no, I, I think I see a right answer over on Twitch. At least one right answer. Oh, Mixer, Mixer's getting there. Mixer's got a couple of them. Okay, somebody's got it. Okay, yeah, so we got at least a couple of right answers over on the Twitch side. And then we got people repeating the right answers <laughs> over on the Twitch side. Hey, Fallout Girl. Uh, hey, is, is put, Fallout. She's, she's over there. Fallout Girl is who I've been spending uh, most of the time helping her out uh, and watching her crash our beautiful cars. Okay, so we've got so we've got a couple answers on Mixer that gave two of them correctly, uh, and so if that if that's where we if that's what we get, then that's what we get. You know, we'll we'll, we'll probably still give something away. Um, the, oh my gosh, Robo Robo M8, you got one. People, <laughs> so so honestly, uh, so uh, Megan and Wonder, I'm starting to think that maybe uh, because it took so long on Mixer for somebody to get the right answer, I think the first one on Mixer probably deserves it. Uh, we got a bunch of people who got it right on Twitch, all kind of all at the same time. But uh, I kind of think that the first person on Mixer who got it probably uh, probably deserves it. Come uh, on, Mixer. So you know, um, that's just my my opinion. We'll get we'll, <laughs> we'll see what you folks want to do. And then uh, let's see here. <laughs> okay, yeah. So so uh, so Megan is still looking at who is uh, who the winner is on Twitch. Uh, but yeah, Wonder Wonder has selected the winner on Mixer. So we'll we'll get back to that in a second. Um, in the meantime, let's let's answer uh, just uh, just one more um, frequently asked question. Like, uh, let's see here. What what do I do to take care of? Uh, uh, oh, oh, when a vehicle gets destroyed, what do I do? So there's a couple different things. When a vehicle blows up, you can actually still repair it right now. In the original game, you couldn't. It was gone forever. But you can actually, if you get a toolkit, which is a it's kind of a rare item to find in the world, or it's one oh that you can ma you can manufacture it if you've got a mechanic. Um, I don't know. You're in big trouble. <laughs> but uh, you. Oh no! You got a feral. Get out of there! Get out of there! I am! I am! Leave me alone! <laughs> oh no! He's on your door! Say goodbye to your door. <laughs> so, 
Yeah, so... Oh, no. Oh, and then... Oh, nice, nice. Phew. Just barely. Squish. Anyway, so... Get that, out of there. The front of the car where that zombie used to be... Get out of there. Uh, that's no, where you stand. I can take him out. <laughs> that's where you stand uh, if you want to repair your vehicle. So get a toolkit, stand in front of the vehicle, and you can repair it. Um, if you uh, if you flip a vehicle over on its back, in the original game, that meant that vehicle was gone forever. Now you can actually, again, walk up to the front of that vehicle, and you'll be prompted with a button. You can flip that vehicle back over again and drive it away. So we haven't completely removed the problem of, of losing vehicles forever. If you drive your vehicle into certain ditches and stuff like that, you can still get them pretty stuck or lost, but that's much rarer than flipping them or blowing them up. Rip um, door. Yeah, right. <laughs> there have a it moment is. of silence for that door. Uh, so, so that's an important thing for people to know. Oh, let's see here. Um, okay. Okay, so looks like, uh, yeah, so we've got a couple of winners now. Uh, so, real quick, let's, so let's go back to the quiz. So the answer to this question was stealth, discipline, resourcefulness, and scouting are the four specialization for wits. And so it looks like our winners are uh, on Mixer. Uh, it is RoboM8. Uh, who, who who managed to pull that out? Uh, it, it took a while for, for for Mixer to get the data, but Robo was the first one to come in with it. So congratulations, Robo! Um, and then it was actually Fallout Girl Four. What? Uh, who who won over on the Twitch Cheats. side? So uh, so yeah, so we got investigation. So we, we're gonna have some water bottles going out to those folks. Uh, and so nice work, everybody. Um, and then uh, one one question that came that has been coming up a lot is um, how come the sniper tower doesn't work uh, the same way that a watchtower does in terms of like reducing um, uh, uh, noise or whatever threat and stuff like that. And that actually is is, is an oversight. It's a, it's a thing we're aware of. Last time when Brian was here yesterday, he talked about the fact that uh, yeah we're aware of that one and uh, and we do want to fix it. So long term, I think you can expect that that you you will get the effects that you that you expect out of the uh, out of the sniper tower. Um, and we're also um, uh, let's see here. We are also, uh, apparently, get, we're getting a lot of questions. I, I've been missing some questions here, but uh, apparently we've gotten some questions about uh, whether there's going to be any um, uh, weather effects and stuff like that in the game. Uh, we've definitely heard people's interest in that. Uh, weather is is a complicated thing to, to, to add to a game uh, of this visual caliber. Uh, be, like, in this generation of, like, uh, of, of games that take place in the real world, because uh, when you add something like, say, rain, mm -hmm. you can't just put like an effect on the screen that's just like, oh, look, there's raindrops, yeah. and, and there's a different skybox. It's like you've got to bring those clouds into the sky, mm -hmm. and then you expect also, the ground to be wet. Also, it's, and, yeah, it's a material change to everything that can be hit, and then you also have to create systems that cover things that don't get hit. Yeah, right? so, it's yeah. Like, so if you've got like a, uh, like a park shelter over something, mm -hmm. then like everything that's under it normally could be wet if it was out in the open, but it's not, and so it, it, it's a very complicated thing. And it's, uh, it's, I imagine you'd have to like figure out where all the puddles are. It's obviously not <laughs> yeah. impossible, but um, yep. it was going to take valuable resources away from systems in this game that were more valuable. Yeah, so I think we, we but we've heard the, the level of interest in it, and so you know we'll, we'll, we'll bear that in mind. But but just one, you know, it's, there there are definitely reasons why it was definitely, weather is a complicated thing. Yeah, it was definitely not something we were like, oh, pff, nobody cares about that. <laughs> it was, uh, you know, th this game um, has always been a balance of finding of making choices about what's really super necessary, and of course, I don't want I don't want to. Um, imply that weather wouldn't have a huge impact in a survival situation, but for us to do that right now, we were going to have to give up something else that, for our game, was more vital. So. Yeah. I think I think the most disappointing complaint I've heard about weather is is I've heard, it's, it's actually not a complaint, it's somebody said, well, I've never here. seen it rain, so my rain collector is going to be useless. Which is, <laughs> oh, that which, makes sense. Which is not true. Your rain collector yeah. will give you water. Even yeah, you don't it just see works. It, it works magically. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's, 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 it, we should have called it a moisture collector or right. something like that. <laughs> have a moisture farm like Star Wars. Yeah. Uh, or moist. something. Yeah, it's, the, wor the more uses of the word moist in a game, actually. The, <laughs> yeah, the better. The better the game is. Agreed. Yeah. Um, Disagree. <laughs> but, I, like, I think a big one to talk to, I mean, Jeffrey hit the nail on the head when we talked about, and and uh, and Brent, too, talking about the materials and the material types and how they're going to respond to being wet or whatever. But lighting, Oof. in this generation of gaming, lighting is so complicated uh, that getting the, uh, like, clouds rolling in isn't just a matter of changing the texture of the skybox. Like, oh, no. You oh, expect yeah. everything, the whole environment needs to respond properly. I got so. pulled out of my truck, and look at how far it rolled down the hill. <laughs> 
<laughs> That's Rub amazing. Crud. Oh, I love stuff like that. Uh, Narc wins is, is is one of many people who have uh, sort of asked about you know when are when are bugs going to be fixed, especially like you know multiplayer issues and stuff. Um, we are we are collecting information on bugs that people are are, are facing in the wild. Um, there we have a, a support page that I think that um, Megan and Wonder might be able to link for you down there. And we've also got um, if you run into a serious bug, uh, we've also got uh, places where you can report uh, that bug. If you, if you check the support page and it's not already handled on there. Um, you can write to uh, stated at sod2 at microsoft.com, um, and you can report bugs that way. And and bugs that get reported by you know by people uh, out in the wild can get filtered to us. You know we'll, we'll get bug reports on those, and we can we can keep working on this stuff. We are definitely working actively on all of these problems. All of us have um, open bug queues that that new bugs get added to all the time, so that we can keep improving the game. Um, let's see. I've seen True Vulgarian mention a lot about. Um what is it? Day versus night cycle? I'm, I'm pretty sure our, our night is quite a bit shorter than day. I think so, yeah. yeah. I, I think it's kind of like, like like you're playing in the summertime. Yeah. Uh, but I don't I don't have the exact numbers in that. We should either, either uh, Brian or maybe Matt Heiniger would know uh, exactly what the, what the difference is. We should yeah. get one of those guys in to, to do another stream with us and, and they can answer some of those questions. No. Yeah. But I'd say if it feels like it's really long, it's because you're experiencing the stress of the zombie apocalypse and night is harder. It just is, so... I might feel like you want it to end soon, and it's you know, a long time, but it doesn't. Man, I am having a hard time, Chris. Come on, zombies, get attracted to that. Uh, all right, so let's see here. Other uh, frequently asked questions, uh, and then we'll do, let's do one more frequently asked question, and then we got to do our last giveaway before we run out of time here. Um, let's see here. Oh, I am. I am playing with fire in here. You are. <laughs> but I needed to do it because everything's broken. Um, okay, so we, we've, we've frequently heard questions of what do I do if my character has an injury? Uh, so there's several different things you can do about an injury. One is the first aid kit consumable uh, will, will remove injuries and, and, and you know, traumatic damage to a character. Um, if you don't have one of those, uh, your infirmary has an option uh, where you can walk up uh, with, a, with the character that you want to, to heal, um, and you can you can heal your currently active character. Um, or uh, if you've got a lot of characters with injuries, what you probably really want is to upgrade your infirmary to an infirmary two. Uh, if you've got an infirmary two, then it will passively heal all the characters in your base uh, in the background. I believe it, I think it also costs meds to maintain that. Um, but but if you've got enough meds, then uh, then yeah, it'll constantly heal everyone who you're not playing right then. So you can you know take a character who's injured who's injured who's got like you know a flesh wound and a cracked rib and gas inhalation, bring them home and let them limp back into the base. Um, and then uh, and then if you leave that character alone for a while, they'll slowly heal of each of those injuries in turn until they're they're ready to go. Um, yeah, and so uh, the infirmary, uh, I believe that field, the field hospital has a lot of the same advantages, uh, Styles. And once you've got a good enough infirmary um, and some experts in medicine, uh, you can actually build, um, uh, you, you can make your own first aid kits to take out in the field. Uh, so let's let's kick off our last our, our second giveaway. Uh, so this giveaway is actually for a State of Decay, original State of Decay t-shirt. These are vintage and beautiful. And uh, Vintage. yeah, as you see, the thing, it's, this is for the hipster, and you've got State of Decay in the background there, and the Skull Eagle on the front. Uh, so it's for the, it's for the original game, but we've got a bunch sitting here. We got to do something with them, and so we want to give them away. Uh, so let's switch into quiz mode while Brant is you know fighting over there, and get rid of that. And uh, so I'll be okay. So here is our big question. So again, uh, the first ten, you know, if, if there's multiple people answering the question, the first ten or so, uh, we'll do a random determination of who gets the prize. Um, and if nobody knows the answer and one person suddenly pipes up with it, then that person might get it. So uh, here's the question. Name the four leader types in State of Decay 2. Uh, so these are basically the four endings of the game, the four different types of leaders you can, you can set up, who, uh, you know, by the, by the end of the game... Uh, you know, they basically they can they can kick off a series of missions that ends the game in a certain way and leaves a certain legacy uh, for your community for, that, that you can then you know you can use the boon from that legacy to give advantages to your future communities. So if you can name the four leader types, uh, then a T-shirt is potentially yours. And so yeah, we don't don't worry too much about spelling. Uh, I think we'll, we'll give you credit. Like Hansel Odolo said, trade instead of trader, uh, but that's okay. Um, 
I think they know this one. That still counts. I think they do know this one. I think this is an easier question than because you know this one you can kind of browse all four of them if you've got a nice nicely sized community. Mm -hmm. Wits is a little bit harder, right? Because and and it's got it's got three other competing skills where it's like stuff will get into your head like oh well wait is backpacking one of them is is powerhouse one of them. Um, so, but this one is it's much more straightforward. So it looks like we got a lot of right answers on both Mixer and Twitch. So uh, we'll, we'll let our uh, community folks uh, figure, figure out who the winners are. <laughs> uh, it looks like we, we've got uh, one picked already, two. Oh, uh, yeah, we got one picked uh, for a Mixer already, and we're working on our, our Twitch uh, winner. And we're going to switch back over to uh, looking at Brant. Brand is our favorite thing. Like he is the eye candy. No, mm-hmm. I'm sorry. I apologize. <laughs> That's on your resume, isn't it? Eye candy. Uh, hand and foot model. So okay. my face was never supposed to be on camera. So one of our uh, another frequently asked question is, what can I do at my friend's base when I'm playing the multiplayer? Um, this is one of my favorite things, actually. Oh yeah. So, so you talk about it, Brand. Um, like uh, I'll use uh, Fallout Girls game as an example. She built some st- some uh, facilities and also had some built-ins at a base that I didn't have. Yeah. I can. I have access to use the unique facility, you know, capabilities at her base that I don't have back home. So I can make like shotgun shells, right? That was I a- can make shotgun shells at. uh Oh, I totally missed my base. <laughs> so um, I can make I can make ammo and stuff at her base that I don't have access to. So you because- come in. So you come in with your ammo resource, and yeah. then you can use that to make as many shotgun shells as you want. As I can. As you can. Based yeah. on my ammo resource. That's right. Yeah. Um, but the other, the other super cool benefit of being in multiplayer is uh, if I run out of shells, and let's say I don't have any ammo or I don't want to use my last two or three from home, I, I can just say, hey, people that I'm playing with, good friends, wonderful humans, <laughs> let's, uh, I, you know, I need shotgun shells. And somebody will go, oh, I got some, and then dump a bunch on the floor. And, uh, um, and then we share it that way because teamwork. Exactly, and so so the, the the thing that you can't do is when you're in somebody else's multiplayer game, you can't decide what is built at their base. So you can't build new things there, you can't upgrade their facilities, and you can't destroy their facilities. And that's one of the main things we wanted to make sure people couldn't do, yeah. because sometimes you can play with random people, sometimes you you play with people that you just barely met online, um, and we wanted people to, to to feel absolutely safe to engage in multiplayer, knowing that there's that there's a limit on the damage somebody can do in your game. Um, and so, but luckily, those decisions about what you build and what you upgrade. They're fairly um, infrequent decisions. Um, it's not, you know, so, so you make those decisions as a host, uh, you know, I- about your own community. Um, and then once you've made those decisions, your guests can, you know, can, can participate and you can, can use the stuff that you built. So we're going to want to repair that vehicle. So we've got a couple winners now. Um, so let's go back into quiz mode. And uh, so, okay, so the answer to the question, name the four leader types in State of Decay 2. The answer is Sheriff, Warlord, Builder, and Trader. And we got a lot of people who got those right answers. Uh, the people who win, though, uh, Jayco10 from Mixer is going to win a shirt. Um, and Red Twilight 12 uh, from Twitch Congratulations. is going to get a, a shirt. So uh, in both, both the people who won the uh, water bottles and the folks who won the shirts, um, Megan and Wonder in the chat... Uh, they're going to get in contact with you or you can get in contact with them uh, through whispers uh, or whatever other means you can, you can uh, figure out. They'll collect your information so that we can mail this stuff to you. And congratulations. And, and also, thank you so much for playing our game. The only way you knew the answers to these questions is because you came and played our game, which really means Truth. a lot to us. So thank you so much. Here's uh, another little tip about uh, putting things from your vehicle into your base. Yeah. I got a note. I got a notice because I had two rucksacks of fuel. I got a notice when I put the first one in that said, we're out of storage for fuel. I'm just not going to put that other one in there. I'll wait until I drop down. Oh, it's, that's a good idea. It's going to be perfectly safe in here. So and another thing you can do usually, like if I put it, if I put too much of a given uh, resource into my base, um, there's usually a grace period before you actually lose any. Yeah. You don't immediately start yeah. losing it some. It doesn't just sacrifice it right away. So, yeah, so usually I'll go in and I, like, like if I have too much fuel, I'll go and I'll make a bunch of fuel bombs or gas cans uh, to, to eat up that fuel. Or if or I have too much ammo at my base, I'll go and I'll, 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 I'll sort a bunch of ammo uh, so that I can get turn it into regu- regular items. And those items, uh, while technically there is a cap on the number of items you can have, it's astronomically high. Uh, and so it's effectively limitless. And so even though you've got a limit on the raw resources you can have at your base, there isn't really a serious limit on the items you can have. So if you're going to turn those resources into items eventually anyway, just do it immediately uh, if, if you have too much at your base. Um, 
Yeah, so yeah, JCM uh, MFG is like, too much food? Go make some moonshine. Exactly. I'm going to put my people through a training regimen. Uh, I'm going to clean up the bathroom so that my morale goes up. Uh, Red Twilight 12 says, also, please make more than two DLC. So the original game had two DLC packs that came out. And currently, we've only announced two DLC uh, for State of Decay 2. But that's only what we've announced. Uh, and so uh, we, we're not promising anything in particular, but... Keep your eyes on us, and you know we'll, we'll we'll definitely you know as long as there are people who are interested in this game, we're going to keep trying to support support it in some way or another. Um, and so yeah, definitely we have not we have not said that those are the only DLC that are ever coming out. Just that those are the ones we've announced. Look at that little light coming out of the fire. That is so gorgeous. <laughs> Um, so we are we're out of time. Um, Boo! I know I know we ended up spending an awful lot of time uh, just answering you know frequently asked questions and stuff. We didn't really get to interrogate you all that much oh, that's about okay. your job. I had fun. <laughs> but you had you had to, you know I appreciate you coming because you did have a lot a lot of really valuable things to say about a lot of these topics and. Uh, I'm I sure should, we'll have you I again. I actually should have let yeah, Josiah thanks. drive around and show us all the cool stuff he put in the map. We should, actually, I feel like we should do like a special stream at some point with like each of the uh, of the uh, world builders going through and just showing some of their favorite places uh, on the map. Yeah, we'll, that'd be fun. We'll have to start multiple save games uh, to make sure that we actually have access to each of the maps. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, That's I think smart. that could be a lot of fun. Yeah, there's so much content in the maps. I'm sure we could pick a number of places. Yeah. Yeah. So. Well, well, that is a great emote to end on. So. Um, Anyway, thank you all for being here. Uh, we really appreciate it. anyone. If we didn't get your questions, uh, we're sorry. Uh, and you know, feel free to to hit us up on uh, on Twitter uh, or get you know get involved in our Discord. Of course, at Undead Labs is our official Twitter account. Uh, you can also at, uh, bother uh, at State of Decay, which is the Microsoft one, uh, uh, Microsoft run uh, Twitter account. And then uh, over here, you know, we've got uh, me and Brant here. We're both on Twitter. You can you can come and bother us. And also, we've got Josiah. So. Thank you, Josiah, for being here. Uh, thank you, Brant. Thank all of you for playing the game, for having an interest in taking the time to spend some, some of your day with us. We, you know, we love our fans. Thank you so much. And um, hey, You guys are awesome. Yeah. yeah. We'll let you get back to the game. <laughs> and we'll, we'll, we'll see you all later.